Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about TV shows, where I talk about the crime. Start over. Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Ray Donovan. Nailed it that time. Still keeping that uh, mess up at the beginning end, so yay. Um, another great episode of Ray Donovan. Um, there's a lot of stuff that went down this episode, but I kind of want to start off with something at the beginning because th certain things that kind of played out of the episode made me think this, but nevertheless, like, I kind of am in the mind process of thinking, like, the whole, like, the dude Smitty, the dude that Bridget's hanging around that she, like, fell back because she thinks, that, oh, Ray kick, got him sick, got um, got him sick so that he get kicked off the list so that Abby could be on the list and get that, like, experimental surgery. Instead of it being Ray, I think it was actually Terry and the others. I think that's ultimately what led to the fight between him and his family. Like, obviously, from the beginning, you could obviously tell it's connected to Abby. Like, at first, in, like maybe it's, like, Abby's death. Like, like, in some shape or form, they were involved in whatever went down with Abby. And I'm thinking, this is it. Because Terry says a line in the episode when he visits Abby's grave, he's like, yeah, like, you know, the hardest part for me is holding your coffin. Even everything we did before, I don't regret none of it. But he's like, holding your coffin, that broke my heart. I was like, that made me think that, like... That has to be what that's all about. Like, they must have made him sit because they're like, oh, this is one guy that's on this list. He might be the next one up. We got to get him out of the way. Because, like, legitimately, no matter what the circumstances may be, they all cared about Abby, too. And maybe, ultimately, why Ray hit, beat, kicked their asses, basically, was either because he found out what they did, which is, I don't know if that would warrant him, them, him beating them up. Or maybe it's a case of, like... He, they went through the surgery, and it's made Abby's condition worse. It in, maybe inadvertently killed her going through with this surgery. So maybe that's why. I mean, because Bridget was there, and so she never... Because that's why I'm, I'm wondering about that, too, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it. Because, like, Bridget was there, and I feel like if that was the reason, she wouldn't be blaming Ray right now. She'd be blaming them. Not unless it was actually Ray did poison him or make him sick, and then the others, like, like canceled it like told Abby the truth and so she didn't go along with the surgery because they told her the truth about what happened not less that's the circumstance I don't know I'm, I'm kind of leaning more toward my original thought but obviously the more I'm talking like the more I'm like oh maybe it's something else I don't know I'm very curious of what it is exactly that went down but whatever it is it seems like Terry and the others were involved in it and that's why Ray uh, basically fought them like he did I don't know, I'm very eager to find out what it is exactly, whether I'm right or completely all basis about it. I'm very, that's probably like the biggest mystery I'm wondering about this season. Like, like also along that same line of like, what were the circumstances of Abby dying? Was it her illness or kind of going along with that same thing as are the other circumstances to her death, you know? So, um, kind of along those same lines about that particular night, we do see um, Ray visiting, I guess it's his anger management or anger manager or therapist is therapist i guess you know a seaman thomas c thomas house character um asking him all these questions is like we'll keep them off the record but uh obviously personal a lot of questions like oh like you know did they ever get hit uh was there ever violence did mickey ever hit their mom stuff like that and also like he brought up a question that immediately like ray kind of dodged like about like the suit like a question of suicide i forgot what the circumstance what the exact question was but you know like we all know like his um his uh sister bridget killed herself so like the moment that question came up i think ray immediately shifted subject because that's not something he talks about even throughout the course of the series like bridget's death has never been something that they talk about a lot like he brought it up to bridget like his daughter bridget like earlier in the series but it's it's been a while and it's not something that gets brought up regularly i mean it probably hits him a lot harder than he'd be willing to admit. I mean, because even the conversation of, like, being touched by someone, like, you know, older than him in, in a powerful position, and he was, like, immediately like, oh, yeah, I talked to someone else about that. So, yeah, see Thomas Howell's character just kind of nodding, like, oh, okay, we'll leave it at that. Which is a question, too. Where is, um, God, what was his name? The father from season three and season four, like, him and Hector were pretty close, too. Like, like the moment things kind of progressed in season four, obviously, like, things didn't kind of really work out, so... We haven't seen him pop up this season, so I guess Ray's kind of put that all in the wayside or something. I don't know. It's just kind of interesting to me uh, that he still hasn't popped up yet, but maybe he's closer to Hector. Uh, cause we did hear Hector's name kind of get brought up in this episode because Terry was going to New York, you know, for Damon. Like, I think either some fights or some training or something like that is connected to Hector. 
Terry had thought about like possibly moving there just because of like everything, you know, fresh start. Even Ray's like, whoa, you, you're thinking about moving? And he obviously he tells like Ray to tell the kids about selling the house. Like he he keeps saying that, I guess more so because it's like, I guess it's his way to get Ray to talk, kind of talk to the others, like talk to Bridget, you know, trying to mend some fences there. Well, he knows he knows they're probably not in the best of terms. Also, plus there's a whole like Connor trying to join the Marines thing. So Terry's probably trying to get them talking to it, kind of maybe force Connor's hand into talking to Ray about the whole situation. M maybe it seems like that might be the case. Like he's trying to mend like Ray's family a little bit uh, to the best of his ability. So but with everything that's going on between him and his uh, wife and just. All that, you know, it's just kind of like, it's hard, you know, like I said, like, it's it's so interesting because like, you know, it it just shows you, I mean, and it's not just this season, like every season showing you how critical Abby was to everybody's life in the Donovan family. And so losing her, like what it meant, that's why, I mean, it broke, you know, Terry's heart carrying her coffin because like she played a pivotal role in his life too. Like, once again, as Mickey described her, she was, she was a shining light in that family you just don't realize how much of a shining light she was until you know we got you know now that she's going it's a lot dimmer you know so but another big part in this episode is bunchy telling mickey about losing the money and everything because he's drinking the entire episode because he's losing it and it's i think the main reason why he won't tell ray is because he I think, you know, he like like much like the whole Mickey and Frank and Abby situation, he knows that Ray's already dealing with the whole Abby situation and the last thing he wants to do, you know, he's kind of like amongst the family, he's kind of the screw up. So I'm sure like he doesn't want to like burden Ray or whatever. He's like, yeah, I caused enough problems for my brother. Um, it didn't correlate in my head to think about what, what that money was. I thought like, I was, it, I was always wondering, I was like, oh, what is that money? It's like, oh yeah, it's a settlement money. I'd completely forgotten about that. Um, but that's so interesting. Um, I mean, that, you know, because he typically will go to Ray for help, but I think it's because of the circumstances. Of, I mean, the, the exact situation and Ray's personal circumstances where he is right now doesn't want to bother Ray. Uh, he does confide in Mickey, which Mickey kind of dives deeper into this whole Avi and um, Frank situation, which apparently it turns out Frank is actually working with Avi. He's making it seem like, oh, all this is Avi's fault. Avi's doing some shady stuff. It's like, no, Frank was already stealing some stuff, and then he's getting Avi to sell it. So, I mean, really, it's harder to say who's really telling the truth in this situation, because it seems like Frank is just using Mickey, but it, you know, I guess he was just using Avi before, but now, like, Avi's more troubled in his work, because I guess, you see Avi, he's very drunk in the episode. It doesn't, doesn't look like himself, just kind of looks a little disheveled and everything, so... Not the typical Avi you're used to seeing. So I'm curious, like, what, what went down? Like, why isn't he working with Ray and them? You know, did he just kind of, after everything went down season four, he just kind of felt, you know, I, I'm wondering, does it have something to do with his mom? I think I might have thought, brought that up before, but, like, he was very close to his mom, so maybe his mom dying or something threw him over the edge or something, or maybe, I don't like I said, I don't think, once again, I don't think things are bad between him and Ray, but maybe they could be. Mickey was originally going to kill him, but decided not to the moment Avi start bringing up all this other stuff like, you know, like, oh, yeah, the fact of the matter is you do this, like, you're just going to be in Frank's pocket. He's just going to own you. He's always going to have something over you. So it seems like what he's doing is cutting a deal with Avi. It's like, hey, you live, but I get, like, what you were going to sell like, because basically the, the drugs he's stealing, that Frank is stealing from the FBI, Avi sells, and it was like $80,000 he got, and he gave it to Mickey. Mickey, in his mind, this is his way of, you know, getting Bunchy his money, money back. Because immediately there was an interesting thing that happened to Bunchy this episode. For one, it was a whole idea of, like, he went into the um, the sandwich shop and ended up finding out one of the dudes from the robbery, Ian, is actually getting a settlement because he was threatening because there's a whole like his lawyer or whatever was like oh yeah you know there's a whole like situation of because the security was so crappy like his life was in danger and stuff like that so then he's entitled to some money and i was thinking like oh so but i was like okay so does this mean that when but when he gets this money eventually bunchy's gonna rob him for or something that's immediately where my brain goes for i don't know why that's just where my brain was but then it's like no bunchy tried to sue too because it's like well i your place had crappy security this place had crappy security and i was robbed when i was there you know so I mean, it's not something that they can really do because it's like not like you're an employee. But I mean, the fact of the matter is I can understand where Bunchy's coming from because it's like he went into this place. He is at least 
there's, there's at least some level of security, much like the employees there. But, you know, it's a whole different thing. But, I mean, but, you know, Bunchy lost a lot in this whole situation. And because to me, it didn't really correlate to me. Like, I thought Bunchy was doing this all for his own selfish reasons of like, oh, yeah, like, you know, he he owns something. He'll do something with it. But it's like, no, this money was a big investment, not only just for him, but also for Maria, that she could grow up and have this money and be able to do something with it, probably do something with herself, you know, have a good life, get educated, like be better off than he was, you know, especially when you think about what that money represents, what that settlement represents. You know, taking that money, something that money that was born from something bad happening to him and having his daughter grow up and eventually taking it and, you know, the money building upon itself and turning into something good as a positive means for a positive future for Maria is what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, sad thing, like I said, the whole situation just got bunchy, super down. He started drinking, even could pick up Maria because the lady at the daycare was like, no, bunchy, you get, get someone else to come here. Like, you know, she's like, I could call like, you know, CPS child protective services for like a particular situation like this. Like the moment he pulled up, like kind of like bumped up on the curve. I'm like, don't tell me you're, oh, don't show up here drunk, bunchy. It's just, it's just sad. Like, cause he's so down on his luck, but you had this whole Mickey situation where Mickey handed the money. He's like, Hey, I'll get you your 1.2 million back. So like, you know, trying to start a partnership with Avi, which is like, I mean, for Avi, it, you know, and it's something he even said. He was like, you know, man makes plans, God laughs. It's kind of the uh, traditional adverb, proverb, <laughs> adverb, proverb, I meant, sorry. Um, seems like it kind of shows up later on when, like, Mickey's like, okay, Frank, I couldn't kill Avi. You know, he's like family. And then you, Frank, be like, BS. Like, what? He spun you, huh? Like, what are you getting out of this? It's like, obviously, he's getting something out of it. But at the same time, like, Mickey always had reservations about killing Avi. Especially if Ray finds out he did it. Like, Ray would have been super pissed about it. But nevertheless, Frank is, you know, Mickey's like, hey, I don't care what you got going on. I'll stay out of it. You know, you you keep doing what you're doing. I'm not going to judge you. Hey, you, you got your hustle thing going on. Hey, that's you. Doesn't mean I have to be in the middle of it. And just to spite him, Frank arrests Bunchy. I mean, not even just arrest him, not even properly. He, like, he's like, yo, Bunchy, you come with me. And he pulls out a gun. And, like, Maria's right there. Like, what are you doing? I mean, because even Mickey says it himself, it's like, come on, dude. You're trying to turn this against my family? We've done nothing but help your career. It's like you wouldn't have the cushy job you have right now if it wasn't for Ray. Ray has helped you time and time again. Granted, Ray needed something from you, and he puts you in a position. But Ray has put you in a position where you've benefited from everything. It's like, and you're going to do this to them? It's like, that's messed up. Like, because I'm, I'm, like I said, it goes back to the whole him and Avi situation. I'm wondering what's wrong. Like, is it that Avi's too much of a loose end? Is it that Avi's falling apart and this is making Avi sloppy and that means things can get traced back to Frank? Because it does seem like Frank might, like, he didn't outright deny, like, any allegations about, like, oh, I'm involved in this. So, like, it does seem like more so, like, a situation like Frank's doing this to cover his ass. I mean, because he's trying to get Mickey to do it. Like, I don't know. And that's, since I'm talking about this whole situation of, like, taking care of people, it's actually interesting that at the beginning you had Derek talking to Mickey about it like yo so tell me what you did exactly with the body it's like he's like I know and Mickey's trying to make him feel better it's okay you threw up it's, it's your first time dealing with something like that because Daryl's never really been too hands on he tried to be a little hands on at the end of season 4 with that whole uh, situation didn't really work out because Avi was telling him basically walk away so he never had to kind of get in the nitty gritty of those type of things involved but never like too like I said too deep into it but it was kind of his first time, and then, like, Mickey's just telling him to kind of let it go and just forget it. But Daryl's like, stop doing that. Stop trying to act like, making it seem so nonchalant. And I think that kind of upsets Daryl because you're acting like it's nothing, you know. I don't know. I'm very interested to see where that all goes, especially because, like, obviously, last episode, Mickey blackmailed, uh, is an actor's, what's the character's name, Jay? I know the actor's name is Brian White, but it's like, I think his character's name is Jay, right? Or is it Jai? Either way, um, it's blackmailing him to be like, hey, help me get my uh, screenplay, like, you know, greenlit. So, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just waiting for that to turn on him. And I'm sure Daryl's going to play some role in it. I'm sure Mickey hasn't said, definitely hasn't said anything to um, Daryl about, like, kind of pushing that situation. So things with Natalie continue to escalate. Uh, she ended up walking off the set. It turns out she's pregnant. It seems like the baby daddy is Doug because the night that Abby and Ray crashed, she was actually running from his place because his wife had come back home. Doug wants her to have an abortion. That's why she ran away. Um, she wants to keep the baby. 
But immediately, and I think maybe on some level, Ray's thinking that too. Is this baby possibly mine? I think that's why she had to immediately like, it's Doug's baby because like they slept together and everything. So, which, I mean, that's still an open enough window because the fact of the matter is, like, I mean, we don't know how long ago that was. Like what we saw in the first, ep wasn't that the first episode? Yeah, the first episode, like that crash happened obviously in the past in the first episode, but it's like we don't know how much time is between then and when Ray, because like Abby was in the middle, was uh, very sick at that point by the time like Ray and her shacked up. So there's always a possibility it might actually be his baby, but maybe she doesn't want to let him know, especially because of the whole dealing with his dead wife situation. So um, I don't know. I'm thinking that's still a possibility, and maybe on some level Ray kind of figures that, so that's why he's kind of keeping her close, because on some level maybe he knows that she's lying. There was an interesting thing, though, where Doug was like, yeah, this whole situation with Natalie, like, you look at her emergency contacts, it's not her it's not her husband, it's not her mom, it's her agent. I'm like, okay, is that what's that supposed to mean? He makes a reference of, like, how, like... They come here broken, and even with all the riches and fame, they still stay broken. Like, you know, like, basically almost alluded to, like, trying to say Natalie had issues before, but it's like even becoming rich and famous didn't help fix those issues. She's still broken or whatever. So, I don't know. The look on his face looked very concerned. I don't know whether it's a situation of, like, the, the question is, is Natalie telling the truth or is she lying, you know? And I, like, the look on his face made me almost think, like, she might be lying because it did seem like he was concerned but I think the fact is that her emergency contact is like her agent. So maybe he's getting jealous or something because he's thinking there's something between her and his aid between her and her agent, and maybe there is. Because he shacks her up at his extra place. Um, how long has he had that place? He's always had that place over the course of the series. I remember like he's he's had it for a long time. I don't remember if he's had it from the very beginning of the series. I think he has. It's always been like his little extra place. I remember, I think when Abby found out about it, she got super pissed. Like, oh, this is like your secret place. There was even a moment flashing back where she was in the bed with him. They were telling that funny story. Um, kind of like a laughing, cuddling moment. And she was like, how many women have you had brought to here? And he didn't give her an answer. She's like, thanks. And he's like, what for? She's like, for lying to me and bringing, lying to me about it. And, you know, um, bringing me here so it's like a sweet moment and it's it seems like those moments kind of get it seems like because like natalie was like oh you want me to lay low is it like oh like he said she's like can't i just stay with you he's like no i don't think that's a good idea she's like oh it's because you don't want people to see you me with you i think it's a circumstance of like maybe ray doesn't want people to get the wrong idea his wife just died he doesn't want people to think like oh he's around with her i mean i guess from a professional standpoint there's that but also because it's like you know the implications of what it can mean like oh so you two are sleeping together oh you've completely forgotten about abby i think that's an angle he wants to avoid um there was kind of an interesting thing she referenced too. There was like an old movie. She was like, "It's like a oh, this whole it's like a Roman holiday." And he was like, "What does that mean?" She's like, "Well, basically, a kind man takes in a princess who brings nothing but trouble." And he's like, "Well, why does she bring so much trouble?" Because she doesn't like being a princess. Obviously, reflecting her own particular situation, that she's kind of running away from the starlight because maybe she doesn't like being an actress or being kind of out in the spotlight anymore. Because her entire life's under a microscope, pretty much. So, I don't know. It's, it's it's some interesting developments on that front. And then, obviously, there's the big situation with Sam in this episode. Where, basically, the dude Tom was like, yeah, I want $2 million And her husband's Oscar. And he's like, wait, what? Why do you... I mean, I'm curious. What is the reason why? Because like, even Ray asked later on. He's like, why the Oscar? And he's like, do you really even care? And Ray's almost like, no, not really. I mean, granted, he was on, like... Because uh, he took a whole bunch of pills that... um therapist that's uh, prescribed for him um they were zoloft um literally the only reason why i know that drug's name is because of dance uh gavin dance but uh nevertheless um he took a whole bunch and i was like yeah that's not going to be good um things kind of played out the way i thought they would uh with the i don't know the uh, ca character's name but the actress who played indra on the 100 uh her character basically robbing uh ray of the box that Sam was getting back from Tom. So I guess they're not on the same page anymore for her to go behind his back. Because she was kind of spying on them when they were making a deal. I guess because Tom was making a deal behind their back. It's like, oh, they had already made one. But then, like, she found out Tom was doing that. So I guess it was kind of a middle. I guess they're no longer on the same team anymore. Because she's like, oh, he's trying to double dip in this. So I think she was going to steal them back and try and triple dip, essentially. Uh, cause, um... 
get herself a little more cash. I'm great it doesn't work out for her because she's so focused on trying to get away from Raiden. She ends up crashing. Um, the box is still inside, so I guess it kind of got taken with the car and everything. Or maybe it got lumped with her possessions, whatever the case may be. I don't, I don't know if she's dead. It looked like she was still okay, just maybe knocked unconscious. Like I said, overall, a great episode. So many interesting developments. Obviously, you have Smitty, his condition getting worse, and you have Bridget blaming you know, Ray for it. You have this whole Sam situation, which is about to get uglier and uglier. You have Bunchy's. In Bunchy slash Mickey situation with this whole Frank thing, which eventually means that they are going to have to call Ray into it. I'm sure Mickey's going to try and avoid that, but I think he might not have a choice in the matter now that Bunchy's gotten taken, and that's just going to turn into a whole situation. And like, the question then is like, once Ray gets involved, what's he going to think about all this? Like, what is Frank is going? What's Frank going to do? Like, is this going to be all for the purposes of forcing Mickey's hand into killing Avi? Or will he force Ray to, like, I don't know. Because, like, the leverage he held over Mickey was, like, obviously all the stuff that their family has done uh, that he is aware of and stuff like that. The things they've done to kind of help him and stuff like that. Uh, and the whole point was, like, oh, don't want to tell Ray about it because Ray's got to deal with his whole situation now. So I, I doubt he'd kind of involve Ray. But I'm very curious to see what goes down. Will Mickey keep this to himself or will he ultimately have to get Ray involved? Will he get Daryl um, involved, I mean, because can't get Terry involved because Terry's in New York right now. I'm curious to see where that kind of whole situation goes. Very curious considering the fact is they're going to be meeting up with Hector. I'm curious to see where Hector is after everything was kind of said and done last season, so. Situation and, uh, where that goes. Because there's actually a side effect of the drugs that, um, he's taken to. It's like, a uh, loss of like sexual decrease in sex drive essentially so i'm like is he taking that in particular so like he doesn't like said nothing happens between them once again i'm curious is that like i'm curious does that stem from the fact is that they had their thing while abby was sick and so now he's like no no no, no. i'm not about to let anything happen between us it's like me and abby like you know i messed up then i'm you know staying away like i'm not about to like you know I don't know, like, I'm curious, like, just, it was just a noticeable side effect, and almost, the fact is he popped all those pills, I mean, granted, more so than anything, that's because he was just, like, thinking about Abby, and it's just, you know, it's his way of dealing with this whole situation, losing everything that he has, and it's just, it, I guess, you know, I guess a big part of this season is going to be seeing, you know, Ray kind of spiral out of control, which he spiraled in the past, but I think this is going to be the really big spiral, you know, so, like I said, uh, great episode. Very interested to see what goes down in the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.